Hi, welcome back to the second video of the tech series one, where we were trying to understand how Oracle EBR or edition based redefinition works. So let's try to do a quick recap where we understand the problem statement once again. So as we are aware that in Oracle, when we are uh, applying any DDL change or a package change, it makes the DB object invalid and we need to recompile all these invalid objects. And of course, when this recompilation is in progress, any transaction using these packages, tables, procedures would fail, thereby requiring a downtime and preventing a 224 bar 7 operation. So the EBR approach works similar to how uh, road is reconstructed when it becomes bad. So when an old road becomes bad, to avoid disruption to existing vehicles on the road, what you would do is to construct a new road. The existing vehicles will continue on the old road. And once the new road is, in, um, is prepared, the new traffic can be diverted in the new road. EBR works similarly, wherein you can consider the old road to be a base addition, while the new road would be a replica of the base edition, we call it as the new edition. So on the left hand side, you have the base edition. Edition one is nothing but a replica of the base edition. But in edition one, you will actually compile the new changes, the new packages, the new views, functions, triggers, etc. So the existing sessions will continue to look into the base edition. Once edition one compilation is over, you will switch over from the old edition to the new edition. So you do this by way of alt database for new edition, and then you drop the old edition once the edition one is stable. Now, the only thing which we had mentioned in the last video was that you can actually do a additioning for packages, views, functions, triggers, but you cannot do for tables, materialized views and indexes, because that is where the actual data resides. And because of data consistency, you cannot actually create a replica of a table or a view or an index. So what's the way out through EBR? So for tables, edition based views come into the picture. So let's take an example here to understand this. So let's assume this is the table, emp underscore, emp is a table name, and it has got five columns, name, job, uh, NGR, salary, and com. And as part of the application path set, you are creating a new column called language. Probably this language column is a mandatory one. So you create a view called emp underscore one. The emp underscore one refers to these five columns. Now, as part of the path set where you are applying a new column, you also create a new view called emp underscore one one. The only difference is that in addition for ename, job, manager, salary, communication, you have a new column on this base table. So the only difference between these two views, the old view and new view is the addition of the new column which you are adding as part of your application path set. So what happens here is that when the transactions comes in to the old edition, there is a trigger which you will write. Now the uniqueness of this trigger is that it is known as a forward cross addition trigger, which means it will propagate the data from this addition to the new addition, thereby ensuring data is consistent across the both the views. So let's look at an example of the cross addition trigger in the context of this example. So in this example, I would like to propagate the data of language from the old to the new. So this is a trigger known as TRG XCD forward lang before insert an update on M1. Now note this trigger is on the old view. It's not on the table. So here it says the keyword forward cross addition. And here I am defaulting the language with ENG. So it's a very simple trigger. I'm not using any complicated logic, but I'm just defaulting it as ENG, thereby ensuring that this new column, which is mandatory, is defaulted with some value. So the uniqueness of this trigger is that it propagates data from base edition to the new edition. So that's why it's known as a forward cross edition trigger 
when you do from the old to the new. You also have reverse cross addition triggers, which are less used, which actually does the reverse when you want to move data from the new to the old. So hope this gives you an understanding of how addition views work in the context of ensuring data consistency for tables in EBR. Thank you.